Hi everyone, it's Lee with Creative Aging from Oklahoma City, well, Arts Council Oklahoma City. <laughs> anyway, as you can hear, perhaps it, it's raining outside, so hopefully you can hear me all right with the rain, but the rain is good in spring. So today, we are gonna be doing simple watercolor sailboats. So we'll just run through your materials list, just a number two pencil, watercolor paper, watercolor paint, small to medium paint brushes, and paper towels for blotting, and of course a cup of water. You're probably gonna use more than one cup of water. So anyway, and as per the usual, the last stuff we're gonna do, just we're gonna start with just a simple pencil drawing and we're gonna do some more, you know, watercolor washes and we're gonna do a little bit of, you know, water and just a little bit of sky where we'll do some loose, um, with lots of water and a little bit of paint. So anyway, all right, well, let's get started. Hello, thank you very much. Okay. And as with all of this, you know, you know, you get to feel free to use whatever colors you want to do. Um, I'm just because it, you know you want to make it your own. And I'm gonna get in here. Let's start with this one. And and I put the word simple today back in the uh, watercolor because. Uh, it really is simple. I, I thought I would start. We haven't really done sailboats before, so we're going to do, um, like I said, start with just a simple drawing. And then this, just focus on the basic shapes, you know, kind of triangular shapes and just the bottom of the boat. This one has a little person in it. You certainly don't have to have the person in it. I've got a couple of other examples that I'll do and show you as well. So start with the, and honestly, I drew this kind of heavy, so if doing watercolor is actually a little bit easier if you do your pencils um, lighter, as I'm sure you guys know this, as I've harped on it before. So I've got a few different sizes of brushes, and really, in this instance, just use what you're comfortable with. And I always like paint gel, so let's see. Okay. All right. And I'll try not to get my arm in there all the time. Let's see. Okay. And remember, you know, anytime with watercolor, initially, especially less is more. So we'll start with a light. Just kind of like I'll start down here with the boat and I've just got I'm using a lot of water and just a little bit of paint with this golden color and then we can blend do a little color blending by adding another color while it's still kind of wet and I've got a brown here and I'm using a lot of water too with it so and then you can go oh my gosh that's a whole lot of brown and that's fine just keep putting water in your brush and then see I'm just kind of mixing it in here. And I like the two together because it kind of adds a nice dimension here. And then if you think you have too much color then you can just put water on your brush and pull some of it off and then blot it on your paper towel and so that way you're pulling some of that color off. And basically what you know I'm doing right now is just getting a layer of color into the drawing. And you can cut you want you we're going to come back later and add a darker bits. And so we've got a little bit of a underpainting here. And if you think some of it seems a little too dark, you can just come back with some water. And that always adds a nice little visual effect too. Okay. And I'm just going to use the gold here for the mast. It's up and bright. Alright. Now it's not quite. 
sound is loud out there. Boy, it's raining pretty hard. Hopefully it won't hail during this, but you know, it'll be fine if it does. Okay. So see, I'm just going around and now with the little, I don't know, strings is not probably the right sailing term, so forgive me for those of you who are sailors, just the cord that secures the different sails, um, we can just leave that as a pencil line, you know, or later you can use a small brush if you want to put those in. And so now I'm going to choose some colors just to, you can do stripes or you can have your sail be one color or, you know, I'm a fan of lots of colors. So I'm going to go in here and just do, I'm still, I'm just using a lot of water with the paint just because I want to get a base coat down in here. And you know, and, and watercolor really is designed to be translucent. So we're going to, we're using more water. Um, then I think I did in the arms too. So, add some yellow. Well, this is orange actually. Got adding some more water here. And I, you know, in the drawing, I kind of curved the line so to kind of give a little dimension to the sail so it looks like it's actually kind of blowing and curving with the winds hitting it. So now I probably typically use your lighter color first, but that's okay. I, I don't have the water's not really dirty, and I'm not really blending these on top of each other right now. So, and it's okay if you get on top of your pencil line. It just depends on if you know you want to erase them later, or you can leave them. You know, I, I've done both ways. As far as leaving pencil lines in a watercolor or erasing them after, so it's up to you. You know, and in doing the sail, since we're doing kind of a big area, the big, this flat brush, you know, might be easier for you if you prefer using that. Like I say, it's just whatever you're comfortable with. You know, and blue gets dark really fast, so I want to make sure I use a lot of water with this. Okay, you're still adding color here, and purple, too. Is, gets really dark really fast. So what I'm, you know, just want to make sure and just keep using a lot of water here. Because you can always add color. It's just a lot harder to take it off, especially the darker colors. So and this will give that nice watery look here. Okay. Oops, I bumped those right up together. That's all right. So, and if you are really bothered by it real quickly, you can go in and remove a little bit, but that's not that big of a deal. So, okay. Okay, and let's start with some red again. So, same thing. jump in and add. So, you know, it started out really dark, and then if you just keep jumping and add, you know, water really fast, then if you have too much water floating around, then just blot your brush on your paper towel, and then come back and just take a little bit of that water off. See, just a little bit of watercolor goes a long way, so we'll just kind of 
Shut it out. Okay. So we have a festive sale and then we can do more color over here or we can just kind of keep it kind of a creamy. So we'll take a little bit of gold. And then this, I'm just, since this is already one color, well, not one color, so I'll take the gold and I'm going to mix a little bit of this kind of peachy color in it. Mm -hmm. I'll just kind of spread it because then that kind of gives it a creamy color and we add more water. Taking some of this off. And you can even see what adding a little bit of white will do just for fun. Just kind of tones it down a little. Okay. So we're kind of getting in our base tone. You know, hmm. if this were all, you know, a silhouette, that'd be one thing, and the person would just be solid. So you can make the person a silhouette if you want, or you can actually kind of paint details in. It's really up to you. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get some brush water here, and we'll take the flat brush. And I have a horizon line in here just to kind of give an idea of where I want the water to start. And so, and I'm going to turn the page. So I'm just taking this and I'm see how I'm just doing really kind of loose. I'm just moving it really fast, and down here, you know, I'm just kind of pushing it off to kind of fade it out. Because I don't really want the water to look really solid, but I want to kind of come up here and... And so I'm going to... I'm coming here with this just really lightly. It doesn't make it too light, but... So we're going to add some darker tones to this. Um, but this just kind of gets, so you can kind of do some water, but you don't have to do a lot. I kind of personally like it when it doesn't, it's not solid water down on your picture, but you can, I thought it would be kind of something different to do. And if the, I'm having a hard time getting some of back up. So I like to fan it out a little bit here on the edges. Okay. So that kind of gives you a soft idea of how the water's starting. We're going to do something similar with the um, sky. Now I kind of put in some cloud areas, but we can actually just kind of where I kind of wanted some clouds, but I don't really necessarily think it needs to be in there. So what I'm going to do really quick is ooh, shake the whole table. I'm going to erase this really fast. Always handy to have a big eraser. It's my friend. Ooh. Don't mess up the paper. <laughs> I'm going to stir it off on the floor. And you can certainly make very distinct cloud shapes too. That's perfectly fine if you're more comfortable with that. So... All right, so what I'm going to do is start with a little bit darker blue. We're going to add some more dark blue down into the um, water, but I'm just kind of we're using a lot of water in here too. And so just bounce your brush around 
And if you have a bigger brush, feel free to use your bigger brush too. I just kind of want to see how I'm just kind of, I'm holding the brush differently too. And I just kind of wanted to add a little bit of, so I'm actually pushing it away from the boat, the blue. So, and I'm just kind of, whoops, it's in, I put that right on there, but it's okay. Pull this up. You know, the sky does go behind the boat, so it's still totally fine. So, and just use a lot of water. And so I'm just kind of moving it around so it kind of creates a cloud-like effect, but you don't really want a distinct line like that. So you can also take your paper towel and blot it, because that will pull up some of the blue. And if it's a little dark, like right in here, you can just blot it, use some just clear water on your brush and just kind of move it. Okay. And then just soften it some more. Got a little bit much. Then we want to add a little bit of blue back here because the sky doesn't stop there. And you can just practice with this because it takes a bit. And then if you want to, go ahead and just start with some light blue to come, ooh, to get you um, more comfortable with using it, the brush in this way. I know we did some of this on the barns, but I'm getting a little heavy handed even with the light blue because it can be pretty opaque if you get a lot of paint on there. And I was just going initially for just a suggestion of sky, but this is kind of more than a suggestion, so. And that's totally fine. And then, since it's, we'll just go in here. When it's wadded up a little bit, it kind of makes little cloud-like blots anyway, which I kind of like, so. And here again, this is just your under painting for the sky, too. And we'll come back in a minute and add some more. And, you, and so basically just kind of with your, you want to come back in with your waves. We're going to slowly, and, and still using the flat brush. So I'm just kind of coming in here with a, just kind of mixing it in a little bit. You guys should be good at this here. And I'm just kind of pulling some paint off if you think you get, get too many lines. And you know, and if you end up wanting just to, if, it, if you feel more comfortable filling the whole bottom of the painting with, you know, blue for the water, that's totally fine too. So we're all just coming out. So now I'm going to go over the boat again, but I'm going to now go over it a little bit with a little bit. Just to kind of give it a little more detail. And so I'm using a smaller brush now, and, and now I'm just going back over some areas with more paint and a little less water kind of like we've done before and like i said you can totally have a big nice red sailboat that would have been pretty cool but it's just a little old wooden one so and then i'm just going to kind of go over certain things and kind of turn it down a little bit but we want to have some highlights and mid-tones too so we'll go back and so you have some nice darks and lights and what I'm gonna do here is add some, some dark blue in here. So we can really get the 
You want to get the paper pretty wet, but then you don't want to really scrub the paper because that can also lead to your paper pilling if you're... So I'm really kind of lightly brushing the paper with the brush, but... Ooh. Always more interesting and get a lot more dimension if you add more than one color. Mm -hmm. well, granted, it may not look right, but <laughs> so you can have rainbow colored water if you want. It's just by adding like these little lines that kind of gives a sense of the water moving. It's gone beyond just being a suggestion of water, but that's all right. an idea of how to and then I'm just taking some water and just kind of going over it and moving it you know and this is like the directional lines that we've been we've done before you know it's just you're moving your brush how you want the water to come out and then you can kind of go in and add some more darker color And just keep building it up and then you can add <laughs> just add some more water here because I, I don't really want any hard lines so you can just kind of come back and add some water on top and then I'm gonna have to let the this relax a little bit because I can tell that the paper is getting ready to be unhappy. So I'm gonna let this relax from being so wet. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of blend this down. So I'm not I'm bringing the water down, but I'm not really adding color, I'm just going to carry what's here and down so it can kind of fade out here. Ooh, okay. And then let's do a big let's see. I'm gonna, so I'm going to blot a lot of that off. Ooh. Maybe I took too much off, but it's okay. I mean, you can see the difference between the softness of the sky and the water. So I'm going to let this sit a minute, but I think what I'll do too is, you know, I'll come back in, but I, I what if you have a really hard edge, like in purple or dark blue, I'm going to try to add something on top of it right now just to kind of tone it down. And then I'm just going to let it sit and... So I'm just kind of spreading it out a little bit so that it doesn't have really... It, you can still see the lines under there, but they're not as hard edged as they were. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do again now is just kind of go over the sail with some similar color, the same color, but just kind of adding, adding it darker and I need a different brush. Okay. So 
I'm adding more paint. Paint less water. Okay, and I'll do the same. I'll do the same with the other colors then too, just to kind of add some dimension to it. See, this is totally doable. You all can do this. Watercolor is funny. You just have to be patient. Which I know is sometimes hard to do. So see, just by adding those extra... And this is going to dry a little bit lighter again. That's alright. You can still go in when it dries. And this... You know, yellow is harder to see, but I can. Okay. And I'm just following along the sail line so it looks like it's curving. And anything, you can always tone it down to. visual texture and Turn this one down a little bit just because it's so it will be a little more like the other one. See, that's kind of coming together, it looks kind of like wind's blowing it across it a little bit. And I can take this gold on the yellow since you can see the other lines on the other ones better so that way this one will have a little more dimension too Ooh. and then i can make the i can do a little darker orange then too on the Orange to get it to pop out a little bit better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, you put the paint on there and then you can blot it on the paper towel and then just keep moving the paint because your brush has enough moisture. You don't have to keep dipping it in the water so here we go so see it's slowly coming together now the uh, I'm gonna experiment with doing something with the water so on the sail we can add a little dimension too by I'll start by doing a little bit of gold and then I'm gonna take a little bit of dark brown and mix it with the gold too so I'm gonna kind of do that on the so I can see on the paper towel and I'll slowly do the same thing Oops. Just kidding, I knocked it, wiped it all off. So. so it has that nice warm tone to it. Mostly. And then you can kind of step back from it and look at it and see if you like it or not. And if you don't, then we'll just add some water and pull it off. This one just has a little bit of... So just 
just add a little bit of dimension on it. So basically you just keep working on your peas and you know as you can tell just by adding you know blending a few colors together it adds more to a little more dimension so you're not just using a solid color and you you know use water just to kind of keep it translucent so it doesn't look solid mm -hmm. okay So let's see if I can come in here and fix some water. I'm gonna, I'm just, you know, white watercolor, you can come in and layer it on top. It's not really gonna come in and make anything go away, but it will tone some stuff down and you can add some. This is gonna soften it and make it look a little more watery because it is actually water. But this will help tone down some of the harsh colors I have on here. And since I've been letting my paper um, relax, meaning, you know, rest from having so much water on it, it'll actually um, work with me better. But you can see how, you know, white is, it's good to have this on it because it softens it. Because I wanted this to be kind of soft. But it you can still see the color and it kind of helps fix that, you know, really heavy lines on here. And then you can kind of spread it out and see, see more of the work underneath. And then you can well, you can kind of experiment with adding some other colors back in here just to see what's going to happen. And you may not like it, and then you're just going to kind of take them off. All right. So you can see I've done a couple more examples, and then also I, on this one that I was working on earlier, I went in... And because of the brown boat and the, it just seemed too brown. And so I went ahead and added some red in the boat. And then because the pencil lines were really pretty heavy and to me it was a bit distracting, I went back in with a big eraser. You know, I used both the pencil eraser and the big eraser because sometimes it's nice just to have a few of your pencil lines, you know, where these are the rigs that are holding the sails. But then... Um, it also is nice to be able to erase some of the pencil because it was a bit distracting. And then I went in and added a darker layer of, you know, blue turquoise under the boat because it would be darker. This one ended up, this is a lot of mid-tones and I know when you do it, you'll have more contrast. But I also, for the sky, like I was showing you earlier, I waited until the sky kind of dried a little bit and the paper could rest. Um, and so I went over with a little bit darker blue again, and so, so you have a little bit more contrast in the sky. And then on this one, I started, you know, first just, this is not really about being accurate as far as, here's the watercolor boat and here is the beautiful reflection in the water. We're just getting the basics of the sailboat since we haven't done it before. And so that would be a whole other lesson. Um, but for this one, you know, just get in the basic shapes. You know, you can all do this as far as the sails and the shape of the boat. And on this one, what I did is I took uh, this brush and I wet some of the paper down here first and then I took some of the you know the turquoisey blue and just kind of laid it in here loosely so you can see how it floated around then I let it sit a little bit and I worked on the rest of the boat and I just you know sometimes it's kind of fun if you keep your palette really simple and just use two or three different colors or four whatever uh, and then uh, the one thing I like about this as well is it doesn't have, you're not covering the paper 
with watercolor. So you have a really nice contrast with the white in the background, but you still ground it with the water below. And so you can just have fun with this. And then this one, you know, it's a little, uh, it's also pretty simple. You totally do, well, you know, here is a wavy line for the top of the water line. And this one doesn't have a shadow underneath because the water is actually coming above the edge of the boat. And, you know, here's a simple shape sails, you know, and I, there are a couple of guys in here and you don't have to have people at all, but this is just to kind of get you all started. And for some reason I have a thing for stripes, so I always, I've been painting stripes in here. But this one is a little, you know, probably the most stylized. And so I also had a limited palette on this one, you know, but I just kind of kept things. I always, you know, like I was talking about earlier, I always start out with light washes of watercolor. And then you can build up to later where you have all of your details, you know, are done with less paint. I mean, more paint and less water. <laughs> so then you have those um, highlights coming out. So everyone, you guys can get and do this. And another time we'll focus on doing reflections because that's a whole other, you know, animal altogether. But I just wanted you guys to be able to come in here and do something, you know, it's, you know, simple shapes for sailboats that we haven't done. And, you know, makes you think of nice weather and sailing. So... Anyway, I hope that is helpful and I look forward to seeing all of your pictures when we get back into the classroom. So that's it for now and we will see you next time. All right. Thanks again. Take care.